do you think you're a mixture of natural and supernatural? Welcome to this flipped preaching video. My name's Andy and we're going to look at a gospel passage for the week to come that answers that question that I think. So it's John 3, 1 to 17. Um, there's a sheet, if you're not familiar with this, there's a sheet which you can print out to go through and colour code and look for things and got some other um, passages from scripture. So we're going to try and explore this passage together very briefly today. So this is a well-known bit of John, um, including John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, which we talked about not that long ago. So I'm going to focus on the, the early bit of this. So the setting is, this is quite near the start of John's gospel. This is Jesus talking to Nicodemus, who is a leader of the um, the Jewish religious movement called the Pharisees, and he comes to Jesus at night time, which is significant. So he comes at night time, um, comes out of his own darkness to trying to find the light, perhaps. And Jesus answers his questions in a very, um, very, very interesting, very new, but also quite ambiguous way. So let's let's have a look at that. The first thing to note is that John who put, this, put these words to paper, is a master of making one word mean several things at once. The Greek language, which John wrote in, hasn't got very many words. So words do that. They've got few words for, uh, fewer words that we have in English. So words have to do double duty. And this passage contains loads of these. So for instance, the word another means both again and above. And this play of words is used um, in this passage. Um, when, so Nicodemus um, says, well, he sort of sets the scene for Jesus to, 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 to say something to him. And Jesus says that no one can see the kingdom of God without being born another. And Nicodemus interprets that as being born again, as in going into the mother's womb. He says, that's silly, you can't do that. But I wonder what Jesus meant. Did he mean being born again, or did he mean born from above, born with a spiritual sense? I think the latter, but I wonder how you, how you interpret that. Um, he goes on to talk about how we need to be born of both water and spirit. We're both we're both natural, water, and we're spirit. Like in Genesis, God took the dust of the earth and breathed his spirit into it. I think humans are a mixture, a beautiful mixture of the natural and the divine. We're made of water and spirit. So being born from above, I wonder if that's something that happens to us, to some people later in life, or whether it's something that happens to all of us. That's part of what's being human is having the Spirit of God breathed into us. And of course, we can favour one over the other. We can neglect one of those. Um, but I think it's perhaps saying that we need to cherish the Spirit within us. Another one of these words which means two things at once is the word used for spirit is the same as the word that means breath or wind. And this is used in this passage in, again, an ambiguous way. Jesus says, um, the wind blows where it chooses. Equally, that could be the spirit moves where it chooses. And do you hear the sound of it? That could be hear the voice, sound and voice are another, pair of, another word that means the same thing. Um, you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. I love that, the idea that the spirit is mysterious. We don't know where it's come from, we don't know where it's going. Like the wind, there's an elusive quality to the Holy Spirit and therefore to God. In the, the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes, there's a, a bit which was probably in Jesus' mind when he said this. Uh, As you do not know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in the mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. There's a mystery at the heart of everything that, there's a mystery in the heart of God. And 
our job is to be, you know, notice the wind, but realize that there's a limit to how much we can understand. So a few questions for you to, to think through. I'd love to hear what you, what you make of it. So do you read this passage as being born again or being born from above? How do you read that word in them? Do you read it as the wind blows where it will? Or do you read as the spirit moves where it wants to? And three, is everybody, are all humans, born of the spirit and born of water? Are all humans, both physical and spiritual, natural and supernatural, or just some? So is that something that happens to some people who decide to become a born again Christian? Or is it everybody? People argue about that for a, a long, long time. I wonder what you think. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope that's been useful. And um, see you next time. Bye bye.